What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. As you know, our brother Sarah Garvey was hit with a copyright strike, about 10 of them. And Sarah Garvey used to work for or work with just pearly things. And so after working for or with her for a period of about a year and a half or two years, something like that, they had a collaborative podcast called The Gray Area. And of course, he was being paid a certain amount to appear on the Just Purdy Things podcast, podcast, the pregame show, which is her main show now. It's a live show. He was paid a certain fee. But Just Purdy Things changed her management. And instead of wanting to pay him that fee, she positioned something that was different, something that benefited her and not him. Okay. So what was that she she positioned to him? She wanted on his YouTube channel to sign a contract to work four days a week to produce um, daily content on his own channel, getting only 30% of the income. So he went from making possibly 100% of his own income to 30% of the income with that deal. And then she would take the restreams of his content on the Just Pearly Things Network and make 100%. He said no. Now, just, just imagine now, when they were making these podcasts together on the Gray Area podcast, she had no problem with leaving his content on his page, right? But I want to play this clip of him explaining how he's won the situation and come back. I am going to say thank you. Um, and I want to say thank you to all of the YouTube content creators from behind the scenes who have given me their air, who have given me their advice, who have helped me beat these, these copyright strikes. Um, they were illegal copyright strikes. And um, I'm glad that I'm now back on YouTube so I can start doing content again. Um, so, yeah. Um, what happened? Basically, what happened? was that I was working for Just Pearly Things for a year and I recently released a video called Who is Pearl? And in that video, I chose to talk about my experiences while I was working with Pearl. And subsequently, what she chose to do was she chose to copyright strike illegally, copyright strike, my channel and... For that, I was not able to post for a while, and other people were able, other people were able to make videos and content slandering me while I was gone, and um, so I wasn't able to uh, make the content that I wanted. So, if we first of all let's go into the um, what Pearl actually done. If you play the first video for the copyright strike, please. So oh, this is what Just Pearly Things is doing now. She's a copyright strike in my YouTube channel with all of the content that me and her made. Even we, even though we haven't signed any contracts and we were on an agreement that is both of our um, podcast, this is what she's done. She's copyright striked all of this content. So that is what she done. Okay, there were there were I think up to eleven videos that were copyright struck, but copyright struck. But what I wanted to explain was that for people who know or didn't know, I was working with her. And these uh, pieces of content were absolutely fine on my channel while we were working together. It's not until we stopped working together and I'd done my video that she wanted to strike the video. So I would always say, why now? Why while we were working together were, were these videos okay? But as soon as, you know, um, I chose to do my video, all of a sudden, now you want to copyright strike my video. This is an abuse of the system. And that's something that I want people to understand. Like, Pearl is an abuser of the system. And she's also um, she's also a bully. So here, here's what he says. He makes a valiant point. He says this. 
If the problem was such that she didn't want that content that me and her did up there, why did she wait until after I exposed what she did to me or what she was trying to play me, then tried to take down my YouTube channel? Because that's what's happening. She waited until after he exposed her. And then here's the situation, right? She said she was gonna sue the guy, then went into various chat rooms, went on to several platforms, all right? One of the platforms was Hotep Jesus. And on the Hotep Jesus come uh, a show, she admitted what she does, all right? She admitted what she does. She admits that, look, we take YouTubers, we give them deals, and those deals are not that good, in so many words. She tried to dress it up like, as it was, but it wasn't a good deal. Because if it was a good deal, he would have signed it. Then she went into comment sections. I've made videos about this, saying like, oh, I need to get an NDA. 30% is a good deal. I have the videos here. So the lady tried to take down the guy's YouTube channel for telling the truth. And you know what was so sad? We got so many black men that was trying to attack the guy for it. So many people was trying to defend her for it. This is why I don't have a lot of respect for some of these brothers out here, which is why I will never work with some of these brothers out here because it's disgusting how some of these black men tried to play the guy. It was sad. It was extremely sad. The man stood up for himself. The lady tried to take his channel down for telling the truth about his situation and none of y'all out here can call him a liar. Because if, if he was a liar, she would have exposed it. But ain't nothing that the man did was a liar. I find no fault in the guy. The guy did what he was supposed to do. And the lady tried to delete his whole entire YouTube channel. And he lost, I don't know how many weeks of income behind the lady. I'm glad for the brother. I'm, I'm proud of the brother. And if this should not teach you anything, as black people, we gotta have more ownership. We gotta stop letting these people come in here into the, into the communities we run. And, and we need to start doing the stuff right. We need to own as black YouTubers, all of our production. Some of you brothers and sisters in, in this business, some of you guys see it all the time. You guys don't reinvest. We have brothers that don't have, want to pay editors. You know, I had to do the happy birthday thing to Dima. And then I had like 15 people trying to get Dima to work for him because y'all don't invest at all. Now, all of a sudden you want to invest because you saw Dima been editing for me, which y'all not going to pay him no way because we know that y'all don't pay. Everybody in black YouTube know black YouTubers, most of y'all do not pay in this business. Y'all don't reinvest. You don't want to pay nobody. All you want to do is get checks and then go to Dubai and, and buy nice cars. Y'all not serious. So the people come into our community that's serious and they put the money there. They put the equipment there. Adam 22, just purdy things, Vlad, because you won't do it. Then you want to call somebody a grifter, which, which they are, because you won't do the business right. So we have a brother that's in our community wanting to, 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 to stand against that. Now he was working with her, didn't mean he, he hate white people or anything like that. He wants to be a man. And you're not seeing that from a lot of black YouTubers. Y'all don't want to own your own stuff. In my production, I own everything from my production. From thumbnails, to the video output, to the equipment that produces the stuff, everything. I own what I got. Might not be much, but I own it. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again for another episode of Celebrity Drunk. Appreciate you for all that you do. Subscribe to the bell. We're out. Thank you.